You might know Chicago for its huge buildings and its delicious deep dish pizza, but there's more to the city than meets the eye. Right under your feet, about 300 feet below, there's a secret network of tunnels stretching over 100 miles under the city and its surrounding areas. It's part of one of the biggest engineering projects in the world. This project started in the 1970s and could become a key player in combating climate change in the future. So what is this hidden beneath one of America's biggest cities? Why is it there? And how was it built without anyone noticing? Let's find out. Construction and transportation makes up about 40% of all global greenhouse gas emissions. So managing how we build and use these is crucial for tackling climate change. Our environment also plays an important role in dealing with the impacts of climate change, which are becoming unavoidable as global temperatures are expected to rise by 1.5 degrees Celsius or 2.7 degrees Fahrenheit. Smart construction can literally pave the way for a more sustainable future and help us handle the effects of our changing climate. And Chicago is one of the cities leading this effort. Let's take a step back in history. From the late 19th to the 20th century, Chicago was booming. But as more people moved in, the city's infrastructure struggled to keep up. Built on a swamp, Chicago's flat and low terrain made drainage a major issue. After heavy rains, streets would become muddy and pools of water would collect everywhere. And to tackle this, city authorities decided to put in a comprehensive sewer system. However, digging underground was too costly. Instead, Chicago lifted its entire city up by a few meters, installed sewer pipes above ground and filled the spaces with dirt. This solved one problem, but it created another. The sewers dumped directly into the waterways that led to Lake Michigan, which was the city's source of drinking water. This caused widespread disease. The administration needed a new solution, and what they came up with was incredibly bold, reversing the flow of the Chicago River. Instead of letting it flow into Lake Michigan, they redirected it towards the Mississippi River. Here's how it worked. They built a series of locks and a new 28-mile canal that sloped downhill. Pumping stations then pushed water through the canal, deepening it towards the Des Plaines and Mississippi rivers, effectively reversing the river's flow. To this day, the river still runs backwards, but as the population grew, the sewer system began to buckle under the pressure. By the 1960s, sewers were overflowing over 100 days a year, leading to frequent flooding. Chicago had to face another huge challenge. So, the Water Reclamation District, along with other local groups, started yet another ambitious project. Here comes the Tunnel and Reservoir Plan, also known as the Deep Tunnel System. This is a 109-mile network of underground tunnels, with three huge reservoirs cutting right through downtown Chicago. It was designed to tackle the city's overflow and pollution problems by redirecting excess stormwater into these tunnels and storing it in reservoirs until it could be treated and released. Construction kicked off in 1975 with Phase 1, the creation of the tunnels themselves. The system included four major tunnels, each up to 33 feet in diameter, burrowing through nearly 300 feet of solid bedrock. Kevin Fitzpatrick, Assistant Director of Engineering at the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District, NWRD, explained the construction choice as, We decided to have the contractor use a tunnel boring machine to carve out these tunnels in the rock, even though traditional drilling and blasting might have been cheaper and more reliable at the time. They figured the machine would cause less damage to the rock. Initially, they managed to construct about 50 feet of tunnel a day. Within a decade or so, that increased to 150 to 200 feet per day. By the time the tunnel network was completed in 2006, it was capable of managing nearly 9 billion litres, or about 2.3 billion gallons, of water. It also reduced pollution by nearly 85%. 
Although the deep tunnel wasn't originally designed with climate change in mind, it has become a crucial tool in the fight against its impacts. According to the latest National Climate Assessment, the Midwest is expected to see more heavy rain and storms, which could lead to flooding that damages property and contaminates drinking water. This makes Phase 2 of the tunnel and reservoir plan particularly urgent. This phase includes three massive reservoirs designed to manage even larger volumes of water, with two already completed. They have wheeled gates that isolate the tunnels from the reservoirs. They only operate when the reservoir is being filled or if maintenance is needed. Also, there's a grout curtain around the reservoir, almost like sealing a bathtub. Construction workers drill down 500 feet with 3-inch diameter holes around the perimeter and pump in grout under pressure. This seals any cracks with holes spaced every 5 feet around the 3-mile perimeter of the reservoir. Now, when it rains in Chicago, water first flows into the local combined sewers, which were initially directed into rivers. However, the new system intercepts this water. Excess water is then funneled 230 to 300 feet down into deep underground tunnels. From there, it moves into the reservoirs, where it's stored until there's enough capacity at reclamation plants to process it. This typically happens during dry periods or moderate rainfall. Once treated, the water is gradually released back into the river. By 2029, when all three reservoirs are completed, the system will be able to hold over 17 billion gallons of water. This capacity will significantly help reduce flooding and pollution following major storms. Even though there are still a few years of construction left, Chicago is already benefiting from its expansive underground network. Since the 1970s, the reduction in contamination has allowed the return of more species to Chicago's waterways, with the number of fish species increasing from 10 to nearly 80. Alongside this ecological recovery, waterfront property development is thriving, boosting the city's economy. A new river walk, complete with restaurants and bars, has also been established, becoming a favourite spot for both locals and tourists. However, even with the capacity to manage 17 billion gallons of water, the system can still be overwhelmed during major storms. In such events, it reverts to the old method of directing overflow into waterways, which can lead to pollution flooding streets and basements. The ongoing effects of climate change could make this a more frequent problem. For over a century, Chicago has tackled its challenges with some of the world's largest engineering projects. But dealing with climate change is a different kind of challenge. It's an ongoing global phenomenon without historical precedent, requiring a variety of adaptive strategies. The Tunnel and Reservoir Plan is just one approach, offering valuable lessons for other cities as we collectively address the impacts of a changing climate. Although storms are becoming increasingly common, Chicago's response remains largely unseen. This highlights the transformative impact of construction. It shapes, changes and safeguards our world, often invisibly. That's all we have for you today. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you're subscribed to Ultimate Megabuilds for more amazing content.